In this Math 2203 video, we're going to take a look at what are called linear combinations and spans. We're going to define what these terms mean. We'll see some properties of the span and we'll take a look at some examples as well. Suppose that we have a collection of vectors from a vector space. I'm going to call this collection V1, V2, all the way up to Vn. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a vector w that's inside of v. And we say that w is a linear combination of v1 to vn if it can be written in the following way. Uh, as a1 v1 plus a2 v2 all the way up to an vn. Each of these a's are a scalar number. So I want to give you a couple examples of this idea of linear combination. So first we'll start in a nice easy vector space R3. If we do this multiplication, we do 2 times this vector minus 1, 1, 4, and we add 3 of the second vector 0, 1, 2, we can simplify this and we get the vector minus 2, 4, and 14. So we would say that minus 2, 4, 14 is a linear combination of those two starting vectors, minus 1, 1, 4, and 0, 1, 2. Here's an example of a complex linear combination. So here we'll take our vector space to be two by two matrices where all of the entries are allowed to be complex numbers. And we do the following scalar multiplication. So we'll take this matrix, multiply it by i, second matrix, multiply it by two, and our third matrix, multiply it by three plus i. When we do the scalar multiplication, these are the three matrices we obtain. And then finally, we can sum all three of these matrices together to get this final matrix down here. So we would say that this matrix down here at the bottom, this matrix is a linear combination of these three matrices up top. So let S be a collection of n vectors inside of a vector space V. The span of this collection S, usually denoted as span of S, is defined to be the set of all of the linear combinations that we can create from the vectors v1 up to vn. So let's take a look at an example of the span. So here I'm going to take the vector space P2. So remember this is the set of all polynomials of degree 2 or less. And I'm going to take this assortment of three polynomials, t plus 2, 3, and t squared minus 1. So that's going to be my set S. What we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out what span of S looks like. So remember that span of S is the set of all linear combinations of these three starting polynomials. So the span, we'll take A times the first one, plus B times our second one, plus C times our third one. So for us, let's just keep A, B, and C as real numbers. And we could even go a step further. We could simplify this through and collect a like term. So let me do that for you. So this is what the span of S would look like. It would be the polynomials of this form here. So this is going to be our constant at the end. We have a coefficient of C in front of T squared and a coefficient of A in front of T. Spans play a pretty important role in vector space theory. Usually what we want to do is we want to see whether or not a collection of vectors spans an entire vector space. That is, if we start creating a bunch of linear combinations of a small collection of vectors, do we recreate the entire vector space? This is something that hopefully you got to see a little bit in linear one um, with the standard unit vectors. So for example, if we take any vector in R3, we can break it down as a linear combination of the vectors i, j, and k. So we could say that i, j, and k span all of R3. That is, in some sense, they capture all of the information of R3. So let's try to generalize that idea that we've seen in linear one to some other spaces. So we're going to take a look at two by two matrices with real entries. 
and we'll take a look at the set of ordered pairs of complex numbers. So let's start with M22R first. So here is the general form of 2 by 2 matrix that has real numbered entries. And what we can do is we can break this up into a linear combination of four different matrices. One involving A, one involving B, one involving C, and the last one involving D. Alright, if we were to do the scalar multiplication in and then add all of these up, we would return back to A, B, C, and D. So we say that these four matrices, as a set, we would call this a spanning set. Um, it actually captures all of the information of M22R. So the span of this set S is equal to M22R. Next, let's take a look at the vector space C2 as a real vector space. So in this case, we have ordered pairs of complex numbers. I'll write that as A plus BI in the first entry, C plus DI in the second entry. And we can break this particular vector into a sum of four vectors. So one is A, one is BI, one is C, one is DI. And then we can factor out the A, B, C, and D, and we get a linear combination of these four vectors here. And it's these four vectors that form our spanning set. So those four vectors, their span is equal to C2. Next, we're going to take a look at the properties of spanning sets. They're going to come as two theorems. The first theorem states if we have a subset S of vectors in a vector space, that subset consists of V1, V2, all the way up to Vn, then the span of that subset is a subspace of V. The second theorem says if we take a set of vectors, now this set that we start with is a little bit different. It starts at V1 and goes all the way up to Vn plus 1. Now if V1 up to Vn spans the whole vector space V, then if we add the last vector in that Vn plus 1, that entire set from V1 all the way up to Vn plus 1 must also span our vector space V. So what theorem 2 is saying is if we know a certain collection spans the vector space, by adding more vectors into the collection, it doesn't change the property of the span. So the first example here is we're going to see whether or not this 2 by 2 matrix is a linear combination of the following three 2 by 2 matrices. Uh, in this question, we're going to assume that we're using the real vector space M22R. Now, we will be using uh, determinants in these two examples. So I'll put a link up to the uh, weave method as well as the 4x4 cofactor expansion method. So click those links um, to be directed to those videos in case you need to review your determinants a little bit before heading into these examples. So to start off our question, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that the linear combination can be made. So if the linear combination can be made, it's going to look like this. We're going to have this matrix equal to a linear combination um, in A, B, and C of these other three matrices. Now what you want to do is you want to simplify the right-hand side a little bit. So we're going to scalar multiply our A, B, and C through. So here's our first matrix. Our second matrix. And finally, 3C, 5C, our third matrix here. Once you've done the scalar multiplication, go ahead and add these three matrices together to get one large 2 by 2. So on our first component, we'll have A minus 2B plus 3C. Underneath, we'll have A minus 4B plus 8C. Over here we get 0, minus 2b plus 5c, so minus 2b plus 5c. And our last component we get 0 plus 0 plus 0, so that one stays as 0. 
So here's the equation that we had before. We had that this matrix, um, we had it as a linear combination, and when we simplified the right-hand side, we end up with this 2 by 2 matrix. And when we compare the entries, we end up getting a linear system in the variables A, B, and C. So we set this one equal to 7, this one equal to 10, and this one here equal to 20. Notice that the fourth component here, the 2, 2 entry, it doesn't give us any information. We just get 0 is equal to 0, so I don't include that in the linear system. So this is what the system looks like in matrix form. So I've just taken the coefficients of the A's, B's, and C's. That's going to form our coefficient matrix right here. And I'm going to call this coefficient matrix A. And all of the numbers over on the right-hand side, 7, 10, and 20, go into that column, um, column vector or column matrix over on the right-hand side. Now there's two different ways, uh, two different thought processes you can go through here. So what we can do is we can set up an augmented matrix, and we can use elementary row operations on that matrix and figure out whether or not this system has a solution or does not have a solution. So that's way number one. Um, the easier way to answer the question is to use way number two, and that is to kind of abuse the equivalent statements a little bit. So if you don't remember the equivalent statements, the one that we are going to use is if the determinant of our coefficient matrix is non-zero, then Ax equals B has to have a unique solution. Now way one, way two, it really depends on the question. I want to say that way two is a bit faster, uh, especially when you're dealing with a 3x3 three three matrix A. It's really quick and easy to calculate that determinant, provided that you know how to do so. Uh, way number one is always going to work for you, and in fact, if you need to figure out the values of A, B, and C exactly, you have to use way number one anyway. So it's up to you which way you want to go about doing it. Remember, way two is probably faster if you just have to answer yes or no. Way number one is a little bit longer, but you're going to be able to actually solve for A, B, and C exactly. So go ahead, calculate the determinant of this 3x3 three three matrix, either using the weave method or by cofactor expansion, and you're going to find that this determinant is equal to zero. Since the determinant is equal to zero, we can conclude that the system doesn't have a unique solution. And this is going to mean that the linear combination is not going to be able to be made. So our starting matrix cannot be expressed as a linear combination of those other three matrices. The last example of our video lecture is going to be dealing with span. So we're going to try to determine whether a set of three vectors spans the real vector space R3. So to start a span type question, what you want is you want a general vector inside that vector space that you're going to be working in. So a general vector inside of R3 will look like this, x, y, and z, where x, y, and z are all real numbers. And again, we're going to assume that um, these three vectors do span. So we're going to take a look at all the linear combinations of these three vectors, and that's going to look like this, um, where A, B, and C are real numbers. And let's sum those together. What we're interested in is we're interested in the A's, the B's, and the C's, whether or not they exist. So our matrix form would look something like this. We'd have 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. So there's our coefficient matrix. We have the variables A, B, and C that we're interested in. And all of this is equal to whatever these real numbers are, X, Y, and Z. Once you have that linear system set up, take your coefficient matrix and figure out the determinant of that coefficient matrix. In this case, A is upper triangular, so we can just multiply the entries on the main diagonal to get determinant of A is equal to 1. Since the determinant of A is not equal to 0, we know that the system has a unique solution. That means that we can find values for A, B, and C. That tells us that these three original starting vectors are going to span all of our three. 